wants you to uh, play 10, 15 minutes a game, sometimes don't play. I said, I'm not doing that. Either you're going to guarantee me some minutes right. or I'm not. But I'm like, let them up earn a spot. Not facts. And the coach, he was like, man, you don't deserve that. Like, you should be a starter. Like, you don't. But he's like, this is what they want to do. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I'm not doing that. I said, I'll rehab. I'll work out every day. I'll stick around the team, come to meetings, fly with y'all, mentor the guys. Mm-hmm. Said, That's what I'm doing. Then it got to the point of like, don't come around. Like, they want me around. Like, I had to work out at 7 a.m. like I was a rookie. They want you to come around at all? Like, I had to work out before they got there. So, like, when they would come in to practice, I'd be at home by 10. Well, I'd be back home by 1030, chilling all day. When you can be happy in the midst of hardship, that's when you see the true potential of the mind. Inky Johnson. It is impossible to avoid hardship. And if you're fortunate enough to never have experienced any challenges in your life, your life may lack purpose and meaning. Difficult times are an inevitable part of life. However, the manner in which we view and approach predicaments is entirely up to us. The way an individual perceives the world is their version of reality. Today, we will look into the career of John Wall, who happens to be one of my personal favorite guards. A highly skilled athlete known for his exceptional speed has recently been candid about his personal difficulties outside of the game. I've been a fan of his since his days at Kentucky, and even though he has found success in the league, he finds himself as a free agent with his NBA future in doubt. If you enjoy the video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I appreciate everyone who's watching. Jonathan Hildred Wall Jr. was born September 6, 1990 in Raleigh, North Carolina to parents Francis Pooley and John Carroll Wall Sr. John had a rough life growing up, with his father being convicted of armed robbery when he was only one year old. John's father was eventually released in 1999, but died a month after his release to liver cancer. The death of John's father affected him like it would any other kid growing up with their father absent. John actually wrote a letter to his father when in the letter he says, when I become a father, I'm going to share your story. Not to sugarcoat anything, I'll let my kids know that every generation can be better and that I'm living proof. Similar to D. Rose, John's mom was forced to work multiple jobs in order to take care of his sister, Sierra, and his pastor, Tanya. The passing away of his father resulted in him becoming rebellious towards grown adults, particularly towards adult men. During his childhood, John had a reputation for being a troublemaker due to his tendencies to engage in frequent altercations at school. That's all I did, Wall said. You hear so many jokes about parents and I have so much anger that I felt I should take it out on other people instead of just taking it out on the basketball court and getting myself better to go to the gym and just zone out everything but basketball. Although John found it challenging to come to terms with his father's death, he found solace in the game of basketball. After attending Gardner Magnet High School for his initial two years of high school education, he had to repeat his sophomore year when his family relocated to Raleigh, his birthplace. John's past combative behavior and notoriety would come back on him during his attempt to join the Broughton High School basketball team. John's exclusion from the varsity squad was enforced by Jeff Farrell, the high school basketball coach. He opted to change schools and chose to enroll at a Christian academy named Word of God. Since John already had a good relationship with the founder, Frank Summerfield, it was an ideal match. It wouldn't be ideal at first with John still having attitude problems at this point in time, causing friction between him and his head coach, Levi Beckwith. During a game against Mount Zion, John was frustrated on the bench thinking he should be on the floor in such an important game. Coach Levi eventually tells John to enter the game. On the way to the scores table, John said under his breath, I shouldn't even bother now. Levi heard him say this and sent him back to the bench. Word of God lost that same game while was benched for muttering under his breath his frustration not being in the game sooner. Despite this little bump in the road, Wall was just too talented. His former coach Brian Clifton helped him receive an invite to the 2007 Reebok All-American camp. After that camp, John was considered one of the best players in the entire state of North Carolina. In his senior season at Word of God, John averaged nearly 20 points per game along with 9 assists and over 8 rebounds per game. He was considered a 5-star recruit and was ranked the number 1 point guard in this class. When looking back at his senior year mixtape, it has to be one of the best highlight tapes of all time. The plays that he was making were something else, and I remember the first time watching him being in awe with some of the stuff he was doing in high school. The vision he had on some of the passes, the left-handed ducks, the acrobatic finishes, he was so good in high school. John Wall had offers from many different D1 programs, including Duke, Kansas, and Georgia Tech. He would ultimately pick the Kentucky Wildcats and join John Calipari. As soon as John arrived in Kentucky, he immediately made a big impact. During his sole season at Kentucky, he was named SEC Player of the Year, having averaged over 16 points a game throughout the season. The amount of speed this guy had in transition was remarkable. He could get from rim to rim in less than four dribbles easily. He also showcased his ability to create plays for others along with playing hard on the defensive side of the floor. The team would end the year going 35-3 and making it all the way to the regional final where they would ultimately lose to West Virginia. John made the decision to enter the 2010 NBA draft after spending a year at Kentucky. He was highly regarded as the top talent of that year's draft and was chosen as the first overall pick by the Washington Wizards. The Wizards were enthusiastic about their recent acquisition of a new young point guard who oozed potential. However, 
However, they acknowledged that there were weaknesses in John's game that prevented him from being the ideal point guard. The first issue came with Ball's jump shot. He wasn't a good shooter, especially when it came to a set shot. He showed more skill with his shooting in the mid-range area. However, his catch and shoot abilities needed to improve. He didn't have a great lift in this shot and his release was slow. With him not having the most effective jump shot, it made his life harder during pick and roll possessions with defenders more times than not opting to go under the screen daring John to shoot. To go along with his struggles with his jump shot, he struggled to take care of the ball averaging over 4 turnovers per game which is what he averaged nearly his entire NBA career. John was a gifted passer with elite core vision but he took chances. He would try to fit passes in the windows that were simply not there. Despite the flaws, John was a gifted player and had a solid rookie season. He averaged over 16 points per game and would have won rookie of the year if Blake Griffin wasn't hurt the previous season. The first two years of John's career were identical. He put up similar stats with both being statistically sound campaigns. Despite the solid performance, the team struggled immensely. His first season as a rookie, the Wizards had a 23-59 record, and the subsequent year shortened by the lockout, they only managed to go 20-46. and The team did not have enough talent to compete with the Eastern Conference, and with Washington not being a popular free agent destination stars like to sign with, they were forced to try and build around their new young star in the draft. In the 2011 NBA draft, the Wizards would get the pick wrong, selecting Jan Vesely. Jan turned out to be a bust. The Wizards would redeem themselves in next year's draft with them selecting Bradley Beal third overall, pairing John Wall with his partner in crime during his time in Washington. John and Brad would form a bond during their time as teammates that would be seen clear as day on the floor. When one player was cooking, the other would step back and let that player cook. In their first season as teammates, John only played in 49 of the 82 games, but in only their second year, the pair led the Wizards to a 44-38 record with their first winning record in half a decade. This year will also be John Wall's first All-Star selection with him averaging nearly 20 points per game and over 8 assists a night. The team would even win a first round series against a roseless Bulls squad, sending them home in 5 short games. They would lose in the next round to the number one seed Pacers team led by Paul George in six games. Despite the loss, the future looked bright in Washington. Fans were hopeful that the team would build on the successful year they had with the two young stars under the age of 25 who seemed to like to play with one another. During the 2014-2015 campaign, the Wizards would improve on their record, going 46-36. and Even though they improved their record, they still found themselves without home court advantage, being the fifth seed for the second straight year. This season, they would take on a young Toronto team who was getting their first taste of playoffs with their young core. The Wizards would actually go on to sweep Toronto in four quick games. John Wall that series averaged 17 points a game and 12 assists, but his efficiency wasn't the best. The Wizards would go on back to the semifinals where they would take on the number one seeded Atlanta Hawks. John Wall would be injured for most of the series with a wrist injury and the Wizards would lose in six games again. By this time now, John Wall was considered to be an all-star point guard, but his resume made it hard for you to make a case that he was in the upper echelon class with point guards like Steph, Kyrie, and CP3. In the four playoff series he played at that point in time, he didn't shoot over 40% from the field in any series. It wasn't like he was losing to LeBron squads either. He wasn't even making it deep enough in the playoffs to meet up with LeBron. He hasn't been selected to any All-NBA teams. The only recognition he was receiving so far in the league was an All-Defense selection in 2014-2015 and a couple All-Star selections. Add on to the fact that the Wizards had a disappointing 2015-2016 season with the team going 500 and missing the playoffs, it looked like John Wall was destined to be a player who would be remembered for making some crazy highlight plays, but ultimately you couldn't view him and his team as serious contenders with him being the best player. But then, 2017 happened. This season, John took his game to another level. He averaged a career high in points, scoring 23 points per game along with a career high in field goal percentage. The Wizards went 49-33, finally securing home court for their first round series, having the fourth best record in the Eastern Conference. John made a strong case for him to be considered the best point guard in the Eastern Conference that season. He was that good. It wasn't just his performance on the offensive side of the ball, he had a big impact on the defensive side as well, averaging a career highs in steals that year. Another big reason for the Wizards' sudden success was the breakout season of John's running mate, Bradley Beal. Brad, before this season, had a reputation of being a great three-point shooter, but after the season, he proved himself to be a legitimate three-level scorer. He averaged over 23 points per game on the best efficiency of his career up to that point. The Wizards going into the playoffs that season was considered to be dark horse contenders who nobody wanted to see in the playoffs. They were matched up in the first round to the team who bounced them out the last time they were in the playoffs, the Atlanta Hawks. John would play some of the best basketball of his career during the series. He averaged over 29 points per game along with 10 assists while shooting 52% from the field and 47% from three. This also included the 42 point masterpiece he had in the closeout game six. Washington would then move on to play the number one seeded Boston Celtics led by Isaiah Thomas. This series would be an all-out war with the home team winning in all four games making the series 2-2 going into game five. With Boston winning big in game five, the Wizards were forced into a winner go home scenario in game six. The Wizards had a chance to tie or take the lead, taking the ball out from the sidelines. 
John gets open, gets the ball, and gives it to Wall. Working against Bradley for three. John Wall! Oh what a shot! Now you talk about a pressure shot. He drills a three-point shot to take a one-point lead in the game. The Wizards will go on to win that game, forcing a Game 7 back in Boston. In my opinion, this is the peak of John's career. The Wizards unfortunately will lose in Game 7 with a mediocre performance from John. That is the third straight year that the Wizards have lost in the second round. And this was very disappointing for a season that showed so much potential. Even though they lost, John made it clear to everyone who questioned if he was an elite point guard that he was one of the best point guards in the league. D. Rose may have been the most athletic player I've ever seen, but I've never seen a player move as fast as John Wall would move with the ball in his hands. It seemed like sometimes he would run faster with the ball in his hands than he did with it not in his hands. The Wizards were all in on their franchise guard, signing him to a four-year max extension worth $170 million after the end of the season. The next season, however, would see the Wizards take a step back with them going 43-39, and no longer being viewed as contenders to come out of the East. They were losing six games to the number one seeded Raptors. Wall wasn't his usual healthy self this season, playing only 41 regular season games. Things would not get any easier for John moving forward. It would actually begin to get a little sad. In December of the 2018-2019 season, John was ruled out the remainder of the year with a left heel injury causing him to receive surgery. Wall would then develop an infection and an incision from the surgery he received to repair his heel injury. Then, to make matters worse, John would then slip in his own home and rupture his Achilles tendon, one of the worst injuries you could receive as an athlete. This injury would sideline John Wall for the rest of 2018 and 2019 and the majority of the 2020 season as well. If you think it's gotten bad, it only gets worse. While recovering from his ruptured Achilles on December 13, 2019, John's mother, Francis, would die of breast cancer. Not only would his mom die, but his grandma would pass away as well a year after his mom. John tried to stay strong in the public eye after the passing of his mom, but on the inside he was broken, and can you blame him? Look at the hand he was just dealt in that short amount of time. John went from having surgery who some would have considered to have been serious but not career threatening, to having a surgery go unsuccessful with him developing an infection, to him rupturing his Achilles tendon in his own home, to then the people who he considered to be the closest to passing away. All this going on and to add the cherry on top, his partner in crime Bradley Beal was playing the best basketball of his career, forcing the Wizards to have to think about building around him rather than John. John was on top of the world after his Game 6 win against Boston. He was the king of DC, but now he was in a very dark place. John opened up about his struggles to get out of that dark place he was in. We're all going through times, nobody got it easy, but I don't think a lot of people could get through what I went through, Wall said. And to me getting back on top where I want to be and seeing the fans still wanting me to play, having the support from my hometown, this important period means a lot. I went to find a therapist. A lot of people think I don't need help, I can get through it at any time, but you gotta be true to yourself and find out what's best for you. Even though the team and city loved John Wall, at the end of the day, Buddy's contract was considered to be one of the worst in the league at that point. The Wizards ended up deciding to trade John to the Rockets in exchange for Russell Westbrook. This was probably the worst possible team that John could have been traded to because by the time he got to Houston, Harden decided to show up that season out of shape in hopes that the Rockets would trade him. At this point, John just wanted to hoop. It had been nearly two years since he had been on the basketball floor and he just wanted to play. He did average over 20 points per game that season on the Rockets, but he shot 40% from the field and 31% from three, and he only played in 40 games that season. He the same John Wall, but he looked like he belonged on the NBA floor. Despite Wall's performance, it seemed like he failed to make a lasting impression on the Rockets. The following season, the Rockets reached an agreement with John that he would not play so that they would give their recently drafted young players a chance on the court. I've never seen anything like what the Rockets did to John that year. You have seen countless and countless veteran players playing for teams who wanted to develop the young players. Eric Gordon played that year for the Rockets and he was not considered to be a young prospect. You even see players like Udonis Haslam. He might not be playing in the games, but he's sitting on the bench mentoring the young players and calling out the mistakes like an assistant coach. The Rockets didn't even want John on the bench. They didn't want him mentoring young players. They wanted absolutely nothing to do with him. At the end of the season, the Rockets and John Wall reached a buyout agreement making Wall a free agent. Following his buyout, Wall decided to sign with the Clippers where he started this season. He was far from the old John Wall though, and the Clippers ended up trading John Wall back to Houston before the season was even over. The Rockets ended up waving Wall, and currently John is not on the NBA roster. Is this the end of John Wall's career? Nobody knows. But if I had to make a guess, I think it's safe to say that John's best years are behind him. John never made an Eastern Conference Finals in his career. He never reached a mountaintop so many NBA players strive to reach, but he isn't the only player in NBA history to fall short of winning a ring. We started this video with the Inky Johnson quote, and I would like to end with another because I think it's a perspective that John could look at his career with, and some of us can use his perspective in our lives as well. Stop being driven by rewards. Stop being driven by outcomes. Stop being driven by if I can get this, I'll do this. Just work. 
And if you don't get what you thought that you were going to get, show up and still go to work. Because along the process, what is more important, what you acquire or who you become? A lot of people believe what you acquire is what makes you who you are. No, it's who you become in the process while chasing what you were trying to acquire. John Wall probably hasn't accomplished as much as he wanted to so far, but it isn't about what you accomplish. His accomplishments don't decide whether or not John Wall should be considered a success. John Wall made a name for himself in this league. He earned generational wealth with his $170 million contract, and he seems to be in a better place mentally than he was in 2020, which is important being a father to a young son. Being a father is a lot of responsibility he is depending on John not just for money wise but to be present if you enjoy the video I appreciate you watching to the end please make sure to leave a like and comment who I should do next it's your boy said and I'm out peace